Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be pressure canning odds and ends that I pulled out of the freezer. And what I mean by odds and ends is that it's all meat and we're gonna do the raw pack method. And it's a little smorgasbord of different meats. I have hamburger, I have like a beef roast that I'll cut up. I have stew meat, I have chicken. Whatever was in the freezer that wasn't packaged correctly, and what I mean packaged correctly for me, everybody has a different method, anything that wasn't vacuum sealed. Um, there was more, but I forgot to pull it out, and I want to process this because I took it out yesterday and it has to be taken care of. It's going to be the raw pack method in pint jars. Come on over and let's get pressure canning. Let's go over what you're going to need to pressure can meat. We're doing the raw pack method. I have rings, I have lids, jar lifters, debubbler, funnel. I'm doing pints today, so I'm using pint jars. You're gonna need some vinegar, paper towel, or a cloth. I have my 921 All-American pressure canner over here. There's about one, it's about one and one half to two inches of water in the bottom as well as the one of these is in the bottom because you never want to pressure can jars directly on the bottom and we're going to go ahead when it comes time we're going to put vinegar into the 921 all-american canner so let's just get started filling up these jars some of these meats i have to actually cut up and other ones i do not need to cut up we're going to start with our pint jar we're going to put a funnel right in there and this is stew meat this is already cut up for me so all I have to do is take the stew meat out of this Ziploc bag and just put it right into the jar. And this is all you're gonna do. I'm just gonna push it in there. And you don't wanna leave any air pockets. And you wanna leave one inch of head space. Oh, and a few other items that I did not say. You're gonna need salt. I'm using kosher salt. There's no additives in that salt. They recommend you do not use iodized salt when you're pressure canning. Let's grab the hamburger. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a wooden spoon so I can push this down in there. Once again, you don't want any bubbles or air pockets in here. And even for the hamburger, you're gonna leave one inch of headspace. Let me take this funnel out of air. All right, that looks good. You wanna leave one inch of headspace. And usually your one inch of headspace is right below this rim. That's one inch of headspace. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this out, not much, and press it down. Now this one's all set, so I'm just gonna put that off to the side. Uh, I'm gonna do the chicken last. A roast. Put this over here. I'm gonna unwrap this. This is, my father did this. He wrapped it in saran wrap. Now you can cut this into any size cubes that you would like to. Oh my God, he left the string on, look at this. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go back and check to make sure there's no string on this roast. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Once again, you're just gonna, oh, I almost dropped it. Take it, put it in the jar. This one's a bit large. But this is basically the same thing as the stew meat. This is a roast of some sort. I don't know what kind of roast this is. But these roasts, they pressure cook. I mean pressure cook. They pressure can up nicely. All right, I'm just going to take that wooden spoon and we're going to push this meat down. And I usually towards the top, like towards the when the jar is getting full, I do tend to cut them in smaller pieces. And we will take the debubbler and go around with that as well. We might be able to get one more tiny piece in here. Take that and just push it down over to the side here. All right, so that one's done. I'm gonna shut this off, I'm gonna finish up the beef and then we'll move on to the chicken. Last but not least is the chicken. I cleaned everything after the beef, so now I'm gonna work on the chicken. All right, so these are like chicken strips, as you can see. I'm just going to put those in the jar. 
and you're just going to push down. Same thing with the chicken, you're going to leave one inch of head space. Might take a little bit, a little piece there, so I'm trying to let me get this knife out of here. There. I'm trying to guesstimate how much room we have left in here. All right, that one's good right there. I also had some chicken breast. I'm just trying to keep the, the chicken, everything on the cutting board. I'm just cutting the fat off. You don't have to do this. Some people like the fat in there. And then I always feel for a little, the cartilage, there's a piece of cartilage right here. So I always like to cut that out. Let's continue with the strips because that's what's was a couple pieces of strips in there. So we're just going to continue with strips in there and just put it right in there. I'm just going to cut these strips in half. And I'm going to take this, just push this down. You want to push down as you're going. All right. There's about one inch of headspace in there. All right. This one's pretty close. I might be able to make it with this one. There we go. Ended up with three pints of chicken. Now I'm going to take this over to the sink and clean everything. Let me show you what we've accomplished. So what I pulled out of the freezer that was in Ziploc bags is I have three pints of hamburger, four pints of stew beef, and three pints of chicken. Now I am going to go ahead and take these sausages and we're going to can those up. We got pint jar with the funnel. Everything was washed with hot soapy water in between. I don't want you to think that I didn't do that. And I'm just going to take a couple of these sausages. I'm going to just two, do two at a time. Now you can actually pack them in their hole. I can go ahead and do that, but I'm also going to take some of these. I'm having a tough time cutting these guys. There we go. We're just going to take the sausage and put it in here. And this is going to take three sausages. And then I'm going to have some upcoming videos to show you what we do with the canned meats on the shelf. A YouTube viewer wants to know how and what we do with these. You can actually put these guys in here whole as well, just like this. Usually you can get three sausages in here, just like that. And so much easier. I like to go ahead and check my jars again. I want to see if there's any air pockets down below. All right, we're going to go ahead and do the same with the beef. It's just a second step that I like to do just to be sure that mostly all the air pockets are out. So that's set. Let me put this in the sink. Now here's an optional step. You don't have to add salt, but I always add a half a teaspoon of salt right on top. We're not going to add any to the sausage. The sausage has enough herb seasonings and salt in it. The next step. I use paper towel, but you can go ahead and use a cloth if you want. I put vinegar. I always use vinegar to clean the edges. You just want to make sure there's no salt on the tops so that would um, stop from the lid from adhering to the jar. And you're just moving like any, any meat bits or anything like that. You're just removing it by using the cloth slash paper towel and the vinegar. So now that that's done, we're going to take our lids. I'm going to go ahead and put your lids on. Next, you're just going to take your rings. You're going to put them on, and you're only going to put them on finger tight. You don't want to crank down on them, just finger tight. Once again, this is the 921 All-American Canner. We have about an inch and a half to two inches of water. You want to make sure this is in there. What I always do is add a splash of vinegar. It just prevents clouding on the jars. Go ahead and put the jars in. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and put the lid on. As you can see, the sticker is towards the front. There's a dimple here. Make sure the arrow is lined up with the dimple. And you're going to attach these, I call them toggles. I'm not sure what you want to call them. And you try to tighten it down. You don't want to make it too tight because you want to try to even out each side. All right, that's about even there. You're going to end with this. Once again, just do them finger tight, just like that. I'm going to reach back on the stove. Now I'm turning it to high. Don't put hot water in the bottom of this because 
that meat came right out of the refrigerator and I put it in jars, it's gonna be cold and you don't want any like thermal shock to happen or anything like that. So the stove is on high. Now what we have to wait for next is this vent right here. We have to wait until this starts steaming and then we're going to let that vent for 10 minutes. Okay, it's starting to vent. So I always use my pepper, pepper mill. It's starting to steam. So now you're gonna set your timer for 10 minutes. You want this to vent for 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes. We can go ahead and put the weight on. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. Now at my elevation, which is less than a 1,000 feet, I'm using 10 pounds of pressure. Now go over to the gauge over here. It's right around three right now. We want this to go up to 10 to 11 pounds of pressure and then we can start the timer. All right, we are up to 10. We're gonna go ahead and lower the heat. You wanna hear that little jiggle noise? Oops. I'm gonna lower it down. Once you start doing this for a while, you'll get to know your stove and where your knob or your heating level needs to be. So now we can go ahead and start the timer. We're gonna set the timer for 75 minutes. It's been 75 minutes, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and shut the heat off. You're not gonna move anything. What we have to do is you're gonna wait for this gauge to go all the way down to zero before we remove that weight. As you can tell by the gauge, it's down to zero. So now I can go ahead and remove the weight. I suggest you use a pair of tongs or the jar lifter as it will be hot. And as you heard, the last of the steam is escaping from the pressure canner. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these up. I'm getting weak. There we go. So I'm gonna take the lid off and probably let the jars sit for like five or 10 minutes before I remove them. Once again, when you take the lid off, open it away from you and watch out for the dripping water. Just like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this over on the stove. I'm gonna let this cool and we will be back. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these jars. I put a cloth on the counter before I take these out. Look at this. We're gonna grab a chicken. Look at that, fabulous. This is awesome. This, is, this adds 16 pints of protein to my pantry shelf. So what's gonna happen now is that these jars are gonna sit here overnight and then I'll do my usual taking the rings off, wipe them, wiping them down, dating and stating what it is, and it'll go down on the pantry shelf in the basement. 